So I'd like to welcome everybody to this tutorial. Um, so uh, just to make sure everybody's in the right place, uh, we are here looking at the data-centric battlefields leveraging named data networks and tactical networks. I am going to be one of the presenters uh, today. My name is uh, Tamara Fai. I am with the MITRE Corporation. And we also have Dr. Alicia Zhang and Alex um, from UCLA and Florida uh, International University. So before I start, I guess um, they asked me to read this out loud to everybody. So I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and do that. Uh, so um, this says, this presentation has been approved for one CompTIA CEU and or one GIAC CPE per hour, up to three total, in support of continuing education for cybersecurity certification maintenance, or it has been recommended for acquisition training. For the session to meet certification maintenance requirements, it must run at least 60 minutes. Please help make the session count by asking questions when the speaker offers the opportunity. AFCEA and IEEE members are eligible for formal attendance documentation if they attend the entire session. At the end of the session, be sure to have your badge scanned to verify that you attended the full session and are eligible for the documentation. If you registered for MOCOM as an AFCEA or IEEE member, AFCEA will automatically email your documentation to you on or before December 1st, 2017. If you're not a member, please join or to renew your membership uh, while you are at Milcom. All right, now I've gotten that part out of the way. Um, so I'm just going to start by providing a very brief introduction to the three of us here who are, who are, who are giving this tutorial. Um, as I said, my name is Tamara Fai. I work with the MITRE Corporation. I've been a, engaged in uh, NDN or Named Data Networks for the past three years or so. But mostly most of my uh, research interest and work uh, at the MITRE Corporation has been focusing on networking for tactical uh, uh, environments. Uh, it started out with NDN, I uh, was DTN, and there was a natural evolution there to get into the area of Named Data Networks. Uh, I also want to um, uh, introduce and highlight my colleague, Lisha uh, Zhang. She is a professor at UCLA. Uh, if you've heard of the name NDN uh, before, uh, you've probably seen Alicia's name and Alex's name uh, somewhere there. Um, so uh, she's been um, uh, in the internet research area since 1981, uh, focused on network architecture, system security, uh, protocol designs for distributed systems. And also Alex. Um, who is a, an assistant professor at um, uh, Florida International University. His research focus are on information-centric networks, named data network architecture, and uh, system network security, data-centric security, internet of things. So the three of us are going to sort of alternate talking about different pieces of uh, the tutorial. I'm going to give you an agenda in a few minutes just to see what we're, what we're going to be covering here. But I'm going to start with one important topic, which is uh, from um, the perspective of tactical networks, what are the challenges and why we see this technology as um, uh, a technology that can play an important role in future tactical environments. So uh, if you're here to attend this tutorial, uh, it's either you're interested in the technology or you are uh, someone who has been looking at um, tactical networks and protocols and uh, communication systems that operate in tactical networks and you realize that a lot of it are fra uh, fragile. There are a lot of problems that we have not uh, solved yet. Uh, this is uh, some recent news that we saw about uh, the Army um, taking a very uh, a closer look uh, um, at um, its warfighter in uh, information network, uh, which is Winky, just because they realized that they're, um, after spending so many years and so much money on the technology, it's gone to the point where it's very complex and not necessarily meeting all their expectations. So there's been a mandate to um, take a closer look at WENT uh, to basically observe what, what, what has been done so far and where, where we should head uh, in the future. Uh, on, on a related note, um, we also, uh, there, there's also some work that, was been, that has been by, uh, done by uh, CERDEC, uh, Communication Engineering Research Development and Engineering Center, which does a lot of research and development for the Army to look at tactical networks, uh, what are the challenge areas within them, and where do we want to move in the future. So I'm going to be borrowing some of these slides as part of um, our discussion here. Uh, 
So this is one of the things that they identify as some of the challenge areas within um, uh, tactical networks. Uh, operational complexity. You're, you're, you're operating in an environment where um, you, know, you have to deal with adversaries. You have to also have to deal with a lot of mobility. You have to deal with um, uh, you know, radio frequency interference, whether it is coming from just the environment that you're operating in or you know, from other sources. You're also dealing with tactical links that don't have a lot of throughput, very limited throughput, and a lot of intermittent connectivity as well. Um, and you're also doing with, you know, dealing with architecture that keeps evolving. So they, they identify these are some of the challenges that um, are, um, you know, that exist within tactical environments. And later on throughout our discussion, I'm going to highlight some of the things that they recommend as what do we need to do to make tactical networks more effective, more efficient. And we're going to try to, you know, sort of um, uh, map these to some of the things that we uh, will identify as functionalities within uh, named data networks. So to address some of these challenges, there has been several technologies that were uh, introduced, considered, tried out, experimented with, evaluated um, to address the, uh, some of these challenges. And these technologies span different layers of the protocol stack. Uh, so for example, uh, there's been work that looked at uh, TFTP, which is a UDP version of FTP that makes it more resilient to loss, disruption, and, and, and delay, and things like that. There's also been work uh, on things like uh, DTN, disruption tolerant networks, which is meant specifically to deal with environments where there's a lot of disruption or uh, a lot of delay. There's also been work on uh, SCIPS TP, which is space communication uh, protocol specification um, uh, transport protocol, which is basically um, looking at the transmission control protocol and trying to uh, modify some of the behaviors within it to make it more tolerant to uh, delay. Um, you've also, we've also seen things like um, uh, content distribution networks, uh, Akamai, for example. They try to introduce the concept of caching within the network as an overlay service to be able to provide more resiliency and uh, availability for the data. There's NORM, NAC-oriented reliable multicast, which is a protocol that was developed by the Naval Research Labs to be able to provide reliability um, and um, to be able to provide reliability and in some sense of uh, congestion control and forward air correction coding and things like that for multicast protocols. So all these have been trying to address some of the challenges that we identify within um, tactical environments or disrupted networks in general. So the claim here is that all these technologies, uh, well, you know, they're trying to s deal with the environment that they're operating in um, by providing mitigations, but they're not necessarily trying to fo focus on the fundamental problem. And the fundamental problem here is that you have applications that are data-centric. They think about data. That's all they need. They want to be able to get a piece of data from somewhere. But the network is not necessarily doing that. What the network is trying to do is to establish end host connectivity. So an application that is data-centric, but a network that is host-centric, they're speaking different languages. And that is the core of the, um, uh, that's the, core of the problem. They're, they're mismatched objectives here. Um, so, what we're going to talk about is named data networking. It's a technology that addresses the core of the problem. What it does is, as we'll see, is it makes the applications and the network speak the same language. They both will focus on the data. Um, and that introduces a lot of very good features, very good functionality that uh, provide resilience, uh, robustness, and efficiency in a tactical network. We'll realize that this technology is um, also simple. It simplifies the network to a great extent. Uh, and it also has security built into it. So we'll talk about NDN um, in general at first. Uh, conceptually, what is NDN? What are the functionalities of NDN? Uh, then we're going to start talking about, I'm jumping into the agenda, actually. So we're going to give an overview of NDN. Uh, my colleague, Leisha, here will go and introduce that. Um, Alex is going to start talking about the code base, what exists within the uh, uh, a code, code, uh, code base that uh, the NDN community has contributed. We'll have a 10-minute break after that, and then we're going to come back and talk about an evaluation of this technology in a notional tactical network. So we'll have an environment that has sort of notional disruption, delay, loss, and things like that, and we'll look at how NDN uh, performs there and compare it against some of the technology that we already talked about. Uh, we'll also have a discussion about where NDN, uh, some of the efforts that have been done into uh, NDN in the, in the IoT environment, 
and we'll, you know, at the end we'll start, uh, we'll have a discussion about um, uh, where, where does it fit? What kind of um, uh, opportunities do, are we looking forward to have NDN be part of? Uh, and that will wrap, uh, wrap up our discussion.